The proponents of one-by drivetrains tend to stand behind the argument that two-by drivetrains have a lot of overlap and redundant gears between the large and the small chain rings. Now personally, I ride both one-by and two-by drivetrains, and I believe that each has a time and a place, but it is true that two-by drivetrains do have some significant overlap and yes, I've done the math. On some road or gravel group sets, there can be close to 70% overlap in gear combinations between the large and the small chain rings, which does seem a little bit redundant. So in this video, we once again don our science hats and among other things, I'll try and explain why zero overlap two by drivetrains don't really exist in today's market. So what we have here is the numerical computation program MATLAB. But before you click away from the video, I'm only showing you this to verify that I'm not approximating anything or basing the results on hunches or hand calculations. Now I wrote some simple code that accepts the tooth count on the cassette and the chain rings in question and spits out an ordered list of all the gear ratios in the drivetrain along with the calculated drivetrain capacity as well as the percentage of gear ratio overlap across the two chain rings. Now the results are typically summarized in this type of output plot Plot, which gives you a visual representation of the gear ratios for any given 2x system that you can come up with. Now in this example here, we're plotting gear ratios on a 2x11 GRX 11-speed drivetrain. The pink data is the 11 gear ratios when you're in the small chain ring, and the blue triangles are the gear ratios when you're in the big chain ring. The drivetrain capacity is calculated and shown at the top of the plot, along with the percentage of overlap of gear combinations, calculated as the number of overlapping gear combinations divided by the total number of gear combinations in the drivetrain. Now, it turns out that some drivetrains have more overlap than others, so we'll start with the stock drivetrain that has the most overlap that I've found so far. And interestingly, that's the brand new Dura-Ace 12-speed road group set. Now, there's only one cassette option for this group, and it's a 12-speed 11 to 30 tooth cassette. There are, however, four crank configurations. An enormous 54 40, a 5236, a 5034, and a new 4636 option. Now, not surprisingly, the larger percentage jump between chain rings, the less overlap there is, because the two independent one by systems are spread further apart. But perhaps more subtly, for the 5034 chain rings, we have 54.2% overlap. Whereas the 5236 chain rings, which again have the same 16 tooth jump as the 5034, have more overlap at 58.3%. Now again, this is because the percentage jump between the chain rings is smaller with respect to larger chain rings that have more teeth. Now the doozy is when we look at both the 4636 chain rings and the 5440 chain rings, which both have 66.7% overlap between the small and the large chain rings. Now to me, this is wild and it really makes me kind of question the utility of the two by system. Now, yes, it is generally true that you do get finer resolution between gears on a two by system, but that's usually in reference to the more narrowly spaced cogs on the cassette. Now consequently, to me, this plot really suggests that of the 24 speeds on the drivetrain, there are really only about 15 or 16 unique gear combinations, depending on whether you favor the big ring or the small ring. Now, the keen viewer will of course point out that one of the biggest reasons to go with a two by system is to avoid cross chaining. And I do have to agree with this argument. Now, let's suppose we look at this plot and conclude that a two by system isn't really necessary because there's so much overlap across the two chain rings. Well, you have to keep in mind that this blue triangle down here is the big, big gear combination. In other words, big chain ring and largest cog on the cassette, which as we know is the worst cross-chaining offense there is. So you do have to keep in mind that this is basically an academic exercise, but at the same time, 66.7% overlap does seem like a lot. Okay, so let's check out a couple more real life scenarios before we really dive into what it would take to produce a zero overlap system. So here's a new GRX 12 speed, which uses 4831 chain rings and an 11 to 34 tooth cassette. Now in this case, we're seeing 54.2% overlap, which is actually the same as what we saw for the Dura Ace 5034 chain ring configuration. Now you have to keep in mind the percentages of overlap in gear ratios are going to be somewhat discretized in this manner because there are integer steps in teeth count for the cassettes and the chain rings. For instance, there are no, let's say 42 and a half tooth chain rings. So we will tend to see repeat overlap percentages in some cases. Now for many of us who are still running 11 speed setups, the GRX 11 speed 11 to 34 tooth cassette and 46 30 tooth chain rings actually has 59.1% overlap, which is a tad bit more than the new 12 speed GRX, 
But again, that's primarily because the percentage jump in chain rings is slightly larger with the 4630 compared to the 4831. Okay, so I think we have a general sense for the amount of overlap you typically see in a two by drivetrain. It's gonna be somewhere in the 50 to 70% range, which to me is just interesting information. It's not necessarily meant to try and sway you toward a one by or two by setup. Again, there isn't one system that's objectively better than the other, despite what the comments below will suggest. Now for me personally, I'm actually just curious to see what a zero overlap two by drivetrain would look like, and if it's even possible to cobble something together with existing parts on the market. Now again, what I mean by zero overlap is that there are no redundant gears, and so you basically have two completely independent one by drivetrain setups with no gear ratio overlap. Okay, so let's just start with a typical GRX 11 speed, 11 to 34 tooth cassette, since that's what I primarily run on any two by GRX setup that I have. Now, if we fix the cassette in this way, we really only have the chain rings to mess around with. Now, if we start with 4831 tooth chain rings, we observe an overlap of 54.5%. So we can either decrease the small ring or increase the size of the large ring. But let's just start by decreasing the small ring to say a 28 tooth inner chain ring, which I wanna say is probably about the smallest ring you can get to work on this crank. So at 48, 28, we have an overlap of 50%. So not particularly close to a zero overlap setup. If we then put the biggest chain ring from say the Dura Ace setup on here, that'd be 54, 28, which gives us 36.4% overlap. So we're getting pretty close, but I think we're about out at the limit of available chain rings. So from here, we're basically into hypothetical territory, but let's drop down to say a 24 tooth inner ring and a 60 tooth outer chain ring. Okay, so in this case, 13.6%. So getting closer. How about a 60 tooth and 20 tooth chain ring setup? Okay, so four and a half percent. So we're getting pretty close now. 61 tooth outer, no, not quite. Aha, okay, 62 tooth outer ring paired to a 20 tooth inner chain ring finally gets us to zero overlap. Now that's pretty ridiculous. Also, if we look at the drivetrain capacity with the setup, 65 tooth capacity. Now I don't believe that there's a rear derailleur in the world that's capable of taking up that much slack. I'm pretty sure that most derailleurs top out at around 46 or 47 tooth chain wrap. So no, this setup is actually not feasible, but this is technically what it would take to run a zero overlap two by drivetrain using an 11 speed, 11 to 34 tooth cassette. Now I do think that there's one last thing we can try and that's to use a super narrow cassette. Now this should allow us to achieve a zero overlap setup without such an enormous jump in the front chain rings. Okay, so let's see what happens if we use a really narrow range 11 to 25 tooth road cassette. Now this particular one is an 11 speed Altegra cassette and with 50 34 chain rings, we have 40.9% overlap. Okay, so let's drop the inner chain ring down to a 28. All right, that gives us 13.6%. All right, so let's bring that down a little bit more. Okay, here, so a 50-24 tooth chain ring combo gives us zero overlap. Now, that's still a pretty huge jump in front chain rings, but I feel like it might be possible to actually shift. And the drivetrain capacity is only 39 teeth, which is actually on the low end. So I think pretty much any 11 speed rear derailleur would be able to take up that amount of slack. So I guess here it is. If you want a zero overlap two by drivetrain with no redundant gear combinations, this could potentially work. But before you go trying this out and singing the praises of two by, let's first consider what the ride experience would actually be like on this drivetrain. I mean, actually walk yourself through actually shifting through this drivetrain. If you're getting up to speed, you're probably in the small chain ring, so somewhere along the pink data. But right here, when you're about to run out of gears on the small ring, you'd be in this small, small gear combination. So small chain ring in the front, smallest cog on the cassette. Then to get into the very next larger gear ratio, you'd have to sweep all the way through the cassette to the big cog, while at the same time shifting the front chain ring from small to large, putting you in the big, big combination, both of which are the worst cross chaining positions in the drivetrain, not to mention the amount of time it would take to shift all the way through the entire cassette. So thinking about this for even just a minute, we kind of start to see why this is a pretty unfeasible setup. In fact, in kind of a weird way, it sort of highlights one of the biggest benefits of running a two by system. I mean, sure, you could hypothetically develop a one by 16 drivetrain that covers the entire range of an equivalent two by system. But really breaking the system down into say two overlapping sets of eight gears 
actually serves to maintain better chain angle and in theory reduce frictional losses through the drivetrain. So what are the takeaways here? Well, it does seem like the biggest takeaway is that overlap in two by systems isn't necessarily a bad thing. I'm sorry to break it to the one by diehards out there, but the fact that overlap exists in a two by drivetrain is less of a redundancy and more of an efficiency. Another thing to take away is that while technically we can build a zero overlap two by drivetrain, it'd be worse than useless from a practical standpoint. I mean, you really would get the worst of both worlds because you'd have a ton of cross chaining and switching between chain rings would be painfully inefficient. Now, personally, I'll continue to run both types of systems because I believe that each has its merits. Now, I personally prefer one by for rowdier bikes like all my mountain bikes, and even some of my gravel bikes as well, where I value simplicity and fewer moving parts. I mean, I personally hate cleaning out mud from the front derailleur and bottom bracket area after a muddy ride. But for my more road-oriented bikes, I still do prefer a two-by system where I can preserve efficiency through my choice of gear combinations and enjoy the fine resolution and small jumps between gears. It just makes sense in that application. Now, if you're still here, First of all, thank you. I really appreciate you sticking around to the end. Secondly, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the matter. I'm curious, had you ever even thought about percentage overlap on two by systems before? What type of system do you prefer to ride and why? And lastly, and I'm sure someone's got this one covered already, but what things did I miss in my rambling thesis on zero overlap drivetrains? And uh, do you have any questions? If so, just leave them down below. I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks again for watching and thanks for subscribing to the channel. If you haven't already, I'll see you next time.